For this example, we're going to look at making some function calls to a factorial function. Up at the top here, I have a factorial function that hopefully computes the right results. And I'm going to use this test suite, generate some tests, and I'm going to have a whole bunch of function calls. We're going to make a number of calls to our factorial function. We'll give it some parameters, and we're going to compare the results to what we expect to see and let the test suite show us whether or not our function actually works. So I've already written one function, which is really simple. It just checks that 0 factorial equals 1. Just to make sure everything is working, I will load this up and run it. And the results say that test 1 passed. 0 factorial was equal to 1, just as we expected. But now we're going to go through and make some more of these. Make some new tests and try some new values with it. So for test number 2, I'll do something ever so slightly harder, which is that 1 factorial should also equal 1. And so the first line here serves to set up the saved register, and it's going to make sure that the function isn't doing anything that it's not supposed to. If the function changes any of the saved registers, then it should restore them before it's done. With this test suite, the set saved registers function will help us to do that. Next thing I'm doing is I'm setting up my parameter for my function. I want to compute factorial of 1, so I'm putting 1 in for my first parameter. Then I will call my factorial function. When it returns, the result should be in register v0. So I'm going to move them to register a0 so I can make a function call to one of the test suite assertions. It expects to get the observed value for my function in a0. a1 should have the expected value that I should get for my computation. A2 contains the number of the tests, so this is test number 2. A3 contains a pointer to the a string describing what this test does. Since I've got two integers and I want to show that they are equal, I'm going to use the assert equal integer function. Last, I'm actually going to enter that string. That it will print out from my description. And we'll try this test as well. So now it's run two tests, both of them passed. Once I've done this a couple times, I may decide I don't really want to type all of this again. So for test 3, well, 2 factorial should be 2. I will put in a 2 for my parameter for my factorial call. My result should be 2. This is test 3, and I'll have a new description for test 3 as well. If I generate a test 4, 
Well, I might have 3 factorial now, which is 6. So I can put in 3 for my factorial parameter, 6 for my expected result, and then this is test number 4. with a corresponding description. I'd have a test 5, test 6, and even a test 7. So again, first thing I'm going to do is set up my initial factorial call, putting 6 in for my parameter, and then calling factorial. Then my second function call is to the assert equal integer. I'm putting the result in A0, the expected value in A1, my test number in A2. Then the description of that test goes in A3. So I will go through and fill out the rest of these. And then we'll see how these work. So I ran them and all seven of my tests passed. So this is an example where we are calling a few different functions. We have, we're calling the set saved registers function. It didn't have any parameters, didn't have any return values. It just did some work for us. Then I'm calling the factorial function, which required me to set up one parameter. And then I'm using the assert equal integer function, which required me to set up four parameters. Each time I just make sure my parameters are in A0 through A3 as needed, and then I use jump and link to call my actual function.